بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. I like just to show gratitude to this community and to my beloved or Imam Zaid and the community in the Bay Area for hosting us and the scholars who flew from different parts of the United States to be here. We have received tremendous generosity and hospitality and I'd like to thank them. Whoever does not show gratitude toward people, he or she not showing gratitude toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, I have five daughters. Mashallah. And therefore, I would like to begin this speech by saying that one of the Jain people that were standing on their shoulders are women. When I was in Mecca, I told the Hajjaj, a Mecca city, a city of Mecca, is the city have been established by the effort of women. Hajar alayhi salam, when Ibrahim alayhi salam left her in that place, he said, Rabbi, inna askant min dhurriyati bi wadin ghayr dhi zarr inna inna baytika al-muharram rabbana li yuqimu al-salah faj'al afidha min nasi tahu ilayhim. He said, Oh Allah, I love my family in the valley with no vegetation. Oh Allah, for the purpose to establish prayer. Let people be around them. People come around them. And that's how Hajar alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam was the foundation of that city. Allah brought people because Zamzam came in. And the, a woman who gave all her wealth in that city for me to become a Muslim, and you, is Khadija radiallahu anha. And the first person who gave their life for Islam in that city was Sumayya radiallahu anha. For I was saying to them, you know, when you stand standing on the you know, shoulder of people, those are the people who are standing on their shoulder. And therefore, the, when we think about our legacy, our spiritual legacy, we have to think about those people who made it possible for me to become a Muslim, and you. Those are the people who established this community. Because of them, we have this masjid. Because of them, we have people like me and all the other speakers and you saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Those are the best students of the prophets, from the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who carried this message to all of us. But tonight we are here to speak about a dear brother, an Imam, Imam Sa'id al Hajj. You know, when I came to this country 30 years ago, I don't mind for you guessing my age, no problem. <laughs> I was advised to watch a movie or series called Eyes on the Prize. And the professor who advised me to do that, he said, because I want you to know what it looked like to be a black man in America. That was the best advice I have seen or heard. And I watched those uh, tapes, video cassette tapes, no DVD. <laughs> 17 of them. I watched them. Yes, those <laughs> big one. And I didn't have uh, a machine in my home, but I watched them in the library, University of Maryland. And uh, it changed my perspective. And at that time, I was. New to the country was my father, and Allah bless his soul, rahimahullah. And until I came to a gathering in the mall, that what Muslim was gathered from around the United States and non-Muslim to speak with our brothers and sisters in Bosnia. I don't know if you remember that, Rani. And I was sitting there. And Imam Sajjah went to the microphone to speak. 
like the Quran is saying, I memorize every single word of him. And I said, I'd like to speak like this man. I want to be passionate like this man. I don't know who he is. I didn't know his name at the time. Except the man said, Siraj Hajj. And I like Surah al Naba. <laughs> because of his name, Siraj al Wahaj. And I said, Subhanallah. Look how people are passionate about Islam in America. And this man, if he spoke Arabic, because I was living in English, maybe he can change at the time. He spoke the same way, become khatib in Arabic. Maybe he can change so many people in the Muslim world. But I didn't realize at the time how much change he's doing that he really impacted the Muslim world. And then I come to know that the effort he made in the inner city. And I said to myself, now I see Imam Suraj Hajj Wahaj as an African American Imam, leaders of Muslim in America, but I can appreciate also Rosa Park. Was made it possible for him and I to be able to be free in some sense, and to be able to have full participation in society. You remember at that time I didn't have a car. I used to ride the bus. And I was saying that for that lady, Rosa Park, to refuse to give her a seat, I made it possible for many leaders in this country, like me, to be able to participate, to be able to have a voice. I have to show appreciation for Imam Suraj Johaj and all the legacy also in America that come before him. And therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, when we think about people like Imam Suraj Johaj, we cannot just to say just thank you. But we have to show a genuine appreciation for a man who traveled almost every city in the United States and raised millions of dollars for Masajid. To stand with him and his family in difficult time. To be there for him in a difficult time. That's how we show appreciation to people. Because I can have lip service and says, me, I'm talking about me personally. I said, I really appreciate Imam Suraj and this and that. But until I show how I appreciate him. Rasulullah Sallallahu said, He said, The example of the believer is like one body. If any part of it aches, the rest responds with fever. Especially if that part of the body is so essential to the body, that your body will react more, maybe more painful to have an eye pain or not than to have a, a, a finger pain. And that's what is I really want to share with you today, that I think as a Muslim community, to show appreciation to someone like Imam Suraj Johaj, to say to him, what you and your family need this time, I want to be there for you. Going back to the hadith that I just mentioned earlier. Rasulullah said, لا يشكر الله من لا يشكر الناس. No one will show gratitude toward Allah unless he or she show gratitude toward people. I want to conclude by saying the following. You know, each one of us, when he or she reflect in their own life, we have people who influence our life in way or one another. Some of those people have passed away. They're not with us, like my father, may Allah bless his soul. Like my mother, rahimahullah. We make dua for the people who have passed away. But people who are living among us, we cherish them. We don't wait until we speak to them in the past tense. We say, we're here for you. We hear you, we feel your pain, 
and we would like to show our solidarity or appreciation to you. You know, my, uh, my father, Rahimahullah, one time told me, he said, son, do you remember the first person taught you how to read or to write? The teacher? And I named it a teacher. He said, you forgot. And I remember who taught you to, the first person to, taught you how to read or to write. He said, do you remember that one we sent you to that preschool called Rauda in Sudan, which is, I don't know call it now, you know, to, to study the alphabet. He said, I want you to make the dua, led by name Nafisa. I want you to make dua for her. Because, he was telling me, because we live in a different city, she passed away last month. He said, that the first person who taught you to, to, to how to read or to write. She taught you the alphabet. Then we send you to the Quranic school. My point that sometime we become big, become known, and we forget who made us who we are. And I'm going to tell you, with no hesitation, I'm standing on the shoulder of Imam Sa'id al-Hajj. This man many times gave me advice and encouragement. He come and taught us at the Adam Center. This outreach Adam does and so forth. He is the first person to give us a workshop how to reach out to other people at the Adam Center, on Adam 500 Grover Street. And I attended that workshop. For my Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this community, beautiful community of yours, and Imam Zaid and the, all the great people who invited us to, uh, to be here. And my Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve Imam Sarah Hajj and his family and give him ease as a difficult time. And I'm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for reaching out and helping him and his family. Jazakum al khair. Assalamu alaikum.